Hello and welcome to today's ghost story from around the world. And today I'm going to tell you all about the Palace of Versailles in France. The Palace of Versailles is a royal chateau that can be found not far from Paris in France and it consists of 2,300 rooms, 67 staircases and covers 67,000 square miles. This opulent building was initially a home for Louis XIV, also known as the Sun King, and today it serves as a museum and tourist attraction, allowing visitors to walk in the footsteps of French royalty. On the 24th of August 1607, aged only six years old, the future King Louis XIII came to Versailles, a town on the western edge of Paris, for his very first hunting trip. And here he discovered a forest and meadows with plenty of game to hunt. On the 14th of May 1610, he was crowned King of France and he next visited Versailles in 1621. And his liking for the location grew stronger. So much so that in late 1623, he decided to build a humble hunting lodge where he could stay while was hunting here. He then decided to rebuild it again in 1631 and construction continued until 1634 and it also laid the basis of the palace we know today. Despite the fact that it was Louis XIII who first started the construction here, the history of Versailles will always be linked more so with his son, Louis XIV, who took it upon himself to build a masterpiece for which he could be forever associated with. Future Louis XIV first came to Versailles in October 1641, when he was only three years old. He and his brother were sent here by their father to escape a smallpox epidemic. Two years later, their father died of tuberculosis at the age of 41, and young Louis was now King of France. Though due to his age, his mother, Queen Anne, acted as regent until he was seen as old enough to take charge. In 1651, Louis XIV visited Versailles again and indulged in the pleasure of hunting from then on, visited quite regularly and became so fond of the place that in 1661 he began to undertake major works on it and so began the expansion culminating in the addition of three new wings known as the envelope as they surrounded the original building. During the second phase between 1678 and 1715, two more wings were added flanking the royal courtyard and it is here that you will find the most famous room of the palace, the Hall of Mirrors. And this is where the Treaty of Versailles was signed in June 1919, thus ending World War I. During Louis XIV's reign, he moved the nation's government and royal court here and it remained the epicentre of French royal power until 1789. Louis XIV died on the 1st of September 1715, and for a brief period after his death, the palace, which was far from completed, fell into neglect until the young Louis XV returned to Versailles. His first concern was to complete the work that his great-grandfather had started and with that the palace undertook major work both inside and outside. This remodelling included the theatre being completed in 1770, just in time for the marriage of his son, the future Louis XVI, to the Austrian Archduchess Marie Antoinette. In March 1774, when he began to show signs that he had smallpox, Louis XV was immediately taken back to the palace, where he died on the 10th of May 1774, 
aged 64 years old. His son was now Louis XVI, and he, like his predecessors, embarked on several projects for the interior of the palace, primarily to the private apartments. He was also very fond of his wife Marie Antoinette, who is probably one of the most famous figures to be known in regards to France's history, despite the fact that she was not French herself. Born in Austria on November 2nd, 1755, she was daughter and 15th child of the early Roman Emperor Francis I and his wife, Empress Maria Theresa. She was loved dearly by her parents and spoiled rotten. Despite the fact that her mother did neglect her on occasions. At the age of 14, her hand in marriage was promised to the young Dauphin of France. And due to this, she had to leave behind her home, her family, and literally everything that she had ever known to go and live with her new husband, who was a literal stranger to her. She and her new wimpy and pompous husband had absolutely nothing in common. She liked to throw and attend lavish parties and relished in the rich lifestyle, while Louis was more reserved and preferred to study. She was a mere 19 years old when she became Queen of France, and she had already built a reputation as being overly extravagant, which outraged the people of France. As a gift after their coronation, Louis gave Marie Antoinette the Petit Triomphe, which had been built in 1758 by Louis XV for his mistress, Madame de Pompadour. This small chateau, located half a mile to the north of the palace, was large enough to house the king and some of his entourage, and it was here that he experienced the first signs of smallpox that later led to his death. Marie Antoinette loved the place dearly and soon set about making it her own. This is probably why rumours flew around that she was having affairs that she could secretly hide behind the doors of a small chateau. But the truth of the matter was that Louis would refuse her sexual advances and it is said that they did not consummate their marriage until seven years after they had wed. Eventually Louis did sleep with Marie Antoinette and she bore him four children. And by becoming a mother, it was enough to tame her, as instead of partying, she instead enjoyed spending time with her family. Sadly, no matter what she did, the people of France still hated her. And when the French Revolution led by Napoleon kicked off in 1789, she and her husband stood no chance against the angry people of France. The royal court left Versailles in October 1789 never to return, and both Louis and Marie Antoinette were found guilty of treason and died at the hands of Madame Guillotine, first with Louis in January 1793, and then Marie Antoinette on the 16th of October 1793, aged only 37 years old. It is said that Marie Antoinette was not even given a proper burial, but instead thrown into an unmarked grave, and her head was put on display for all to see. In 1815, Marie Antoinette's remains, along with those of Louis XVI, were transferred to the royal crypt of the Basilica of Saint Denis in Paris. Sadly, during the French Revolution, Versailles fell into disrepair, and most of the furniture was sold. Some restoration work was undertaken by Napoleon in 1810, whilst he lived in the Grand Triangle, as it was more modest than the palace, and Louis XVIII in 1820. However, it was not until Louis Philippe I succeeded to the throne in 1830 that Versailles was brought back to life, and he decided to turn it into a museum which opened in 1837. The palace continued to be a seat of power and hosted many important events, and over the years it has seen many restoration projects that have returned it back to how it is seen today. A few 
Oh, and not a ghost story as such. One of the most well-known tales connected with the Palace of Versailles is the one that was told by Charlotte Mobley and Eleanor Jourdain, who visited the palace in August 1901. After becoming bored of the tour that they were on, they decided to take a walk through the gardens of the Petit Trion, and soon became lost as everything around them appeared to look different to how it had done previously. They saw dignified men with three cornered hats, an old plough and a farmhouse, and soon encountered a man with a cloak and a large hat. Mobile described him as having a dark and ruddy complexion, and that he was repulsive to look at as his face was marked by smallpox, and his expression was evil and unseeing. The two women could not get away from him any quicker even if they had tried. And soon they encountered another man that they described as being tall, with large dark eyes and crisp curly hair under a large hat. He was able to direct them back towards the Petit Triano, and so off they went. And after crossing a bridge they found themselves in the gardens in front of the palace. It was here that Mobley spotted a lady sketching on the grass staring at them. She described the lady as wearing an old-fashioned summer dress with a white hat on her head, and her hair was rather fair. At first, Mobley thought that maybe she was a tourist, but her outfit just didn't sit right with her. The only thing about this encounter was that only Mobley saw this lady, who she believes was Marie Antoinette. The two women eventually made their way back to the rest of their tour group, and months later, they decided to speak about their experience at Versailles and even went back to visit again to see if they could find what they had seen previously, which unfortunately, they could not. However, they were able to find out that the old plough that they had seen could have been the same one that used to be on display in the grounds in 1789. The same with the bridge that they had crossed. That too also used to exist in 1789. But it doesn't anymore. The dignified men that they saw, they learned were wearing the uniform of Marie Antoinette's Swiss Guard. And finally, the lady that Mobley claimed she saw could not have been anyone else other than Marie Antoinette herself. Could it be possible that these two ladies somehow went back in time to 1789? Or did they just make the whole thing up? No one will ever know. There have been reports of white mists and cold spots being seen and felt by Marie Antoinette's bed in the Petit Trion. It is also reported that objects moved by themselves in the Queen's apartments in the palace, as well as glass objects breaking for no apparent reason. A photo also taken in the Queen's apartment clearly shows a misty figure by Marie Antoinette's bed. Could this possibly be? The last French queen, who is also set up a haunt for places too. The ghost of Louis XVI is also said to haunt the palace, and it is said that he roams the halls of his vast palace, perhaps searching for his wife and children. Other spirits that are said to haunt the palace include Benjamin Franklin, who visited Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette in 1778. Charles de Gaulle, who used the Grand Trian as his offices during his presidency, and Napoleon, who also stayed in the Grand Trian with his second wife on many occasions. And so concludes today's ghost story from around the world. I have to admit I was a little bit disappointed over the last few days I've been reading and watching documentaries about the history of Versailles and you would honestly think that there would be more paranormal activity going on there but there just doesn't seem to be anything out there on the internet indicating otherwise. I have to admit the Palace of Versailles is one place I would definitely love to visit. It is indeed 
beautiful and I am sure that King Louis the 14th would definitely, definitely be proud of how it looks today. I sure you guys if you enjoyed this ghost story from around the world. Please do let me know by leaving a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, please do leave them below. But that's it now. Thank you for watching. You take care. And I'll see you all soon. Until then, have a nap. Today I'm channeling the spirit of Pocahontas. <laughs> <laughs>